As many of you know, I've been chaplain of Oxford United Women's Football Club since last September. The chaplaincy was facilitated through an organisation called Sports Chaplaincy UK, which aims to get chaplains into as many areas of sport as it can. They point out that when you take into account everyone involved in running a sporting event, including spectators, ground staff, parents and players, you get a community of something like 23 million people, a third of the population, far more than are usually in church on a Sunday. So it makes sense to serve this community with an expression of God's love, such as a chaplaincy scheme. Most of the chaplains are to men's sports, but there's recently been a rush of chaplains appointed to women's football clubs. We had a Zoom meeting of all the women's football chaplains a couple of weeks ago, and of the 13 members of the group, something like 10 have been appointed within the last year. I think that's great for a number of reasons, not least because it looks like there's been a positive experience of chaplaincy among the women's clubs, and so more of them are wanting in on it. What does it involve then? Well, the boundaries are laid down by Sports Chaplaincy UK and the clubs. Sports Chaplaincy sums it up by saying that chaplains are to be, quote, pastorally proactive and spiritually reactive, unquote. In other words, we're free to talk about spiritual things if anyone wants to talk about them. But the main thing is to be there for all the team and staff in a pastoral capacity, whatever their own beliefs or lack of them. On the ground, our access to the players and involvement with the club is determined by the manager. And I have to say that the manager of OUWFC, Liam Gilbert, has been wonderful. He's clearly very much behind the chaplaincy idea and has made all sorts of attempts to get me involved with the girls. My duties are to be there for at least one of their two weekly training sessions and at home games. I could also go to away games, but there isn't usually a team bus, and so people have to find their own way there. The girls train at the Oxford City Football Club ground on Tuesdays and at Whitelands Farm Bicester on Thursdays. I started by going to the Tuesday nights because they were more convenient, but the Thursday sessions include a half hour team building and video review session, so it seemed better to go there because I get to spend more time with the girls by being in the team building session. During the practice itself, I stand on the sidelines and watch them and pray for them. Both of the training grounds have artificial turf, which you shouldn't run on without wearing studs. So I bought football boots so that I could go onto the pitch if necessary. I talk to the physios and the other coaching staff. I chase and return footballs that they kick off and even out of the pitch during the practice. That's a full-time job. I talk to players who've come off injured or who are sitting out the session because of ongoing injury. I join in as Liam asks me to, keeping score for their drills, moving goalposts, setting out and collecting cones on the pitch. Before matches and practices I go into the changing room and though I felt quite self-conscious about that initially, the girls don't seem to mind at all. It's as if I wasn't there, which I take as a good sign. They obviously feel comfortable with me there. If they want to talk to me, they will. They address the odd remark to me as they banter between themselves, so I know that they do accept me. On match days, I've been on the turnstiles several times, which has enabled me to meet some of the regular supporters and the parents and friends of the players. During the game, I wander round, chat to the volunteers and other ground staff, at half-time, I go into the changing room as Liam gives the team rousing and often expletive-filled encouragement. I wait after the match to talk to the players if they feel they want to talk, especially after a defeat. It's a case of just being there for them. Nothing stupendous, just quiet presence. Being there with them because of what I believe, or should I say, who I believe in, for their sake and for God's sake. It's been a great privilege. I've been included in everything, in the secret Santa and the Christmas dinner, in the initiatory karaoke, which they all cheered, and people even sometimes apologise to me when they swear, which makes me smile. They have wonderful skills, great dedication, and a thoroughly supportive team spirit. It's not good all the time, of course, as John mentioned. 
there are the hard things and the difficulties. But I see in the team and in the staff the good things and I give thanks for them and aim to encourage them. One of the players has repeatedly said to me as I've stood on the sidelines at freezing dark practices, I don't get why you keep standing there in the cold. I'd be inside. But that's precisely the point. Being there with them to show them the light of Christ in the name and for the sake of Christ, who loves them just as much as he loves the rest of the world. It's wonderful to have the chance to do this work and I thank God for it and for all those I encounter through it.